What's going on, guys? Juan, love up to everybody. We got UFC Fight Night, Tavasso versus Taboro. Prediction breakdown here, guys. I'm going to flash through this real quick, though. Before I get started, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel. Also, check out my Patreon account for all my Patreon picks, my face off predictions, and prop plays. You can also donate to my PayPal account also to help out the channel, guys. Um, I appreciate all the donations and the subscriptions that I've been getting lately. Um, enough respect for that, guys. Um, the more subscription, the more energy is the better my work will be you know you um you know you build me up and i build you guys up you know that's how it works you know the energy you put out is the energy you get back so positive energy in return you get positive energy back you know that's just a love right there um last card there man the last ufc card was pretty good man that pay-per-view card right there man um remember i told you um if you listen to my breakdowns and my um odd breakdowns are crazy odds i mentioned to you that um that fight there with um, Dustin Proyer versus um, Dennis, I believe. Um, I told you, you know, the experience, you know, um, Dustin Proyer is a very experienced guy and just the odds were off, man. And um, again, a guy like Dustin Proyer is from Miami, the hometown guy, and experience, you know, and it just, and then what I saw on the face offs, you know, Dennis looks nervous. You know, he looks very nervous and very, very, very nervous. And once I saw that, on my face-off predictions, I had Dustin Proyer, second round, KOTQ. See? So you guys sign up to that Patreon account. You guys can see all these plays because I will make changes and put it on my um, Patreon. So I had Dustin Proyer by KOTQ in the second round. And exactly what happened. You know, just your experience. Dustin Proyer is too experienced. It's too of a season fighter, man. It, 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 Anywhere the fight goes, Dustin Poirier, you know, you know, is better. And I feel Dustin Poirier just playing around with him a little bit. You know, I think Dustin Poirier could have finished him even quicker if he wanted to. You know, it's just, it is what it is. You know, hopefully that Dennis is okay and it's all over at the end of the day. You know, you get knocked all like that. You know, it's not good. You know, you're not supposed to, <laughs> you your, your head and not supposed to get hit like that. You know I mean? He got knocked up pretty bad. So, um, yeah, let's hope everything is okay with him. You know, um, 13 fights in this card here, guys. Don't flat through this real card, but I was just saying that UFC, that last pay per view card was a very, very good card, man. Um, and also, um, the Amali fight, exactly what I said distance in time and reach, the movement. You know, um, a guy like um, the guy that was fighting there, what's his freaking name? I forgot his name. <laughs> um, Vera, Vera, Vera is too flat footed, man. You know, various too flat footed. The entire card is good. McAvoy and Page, same exact thing. Kevin Holland is too flat footed. He doesn't know how to reach him. He doesn't have relationship with that kind of movement. You know, if he's, if, if a flat foot like that, how are you gonna, you know, land techniques on these guys that are moving in and out and laterally? You know, Peter Yen, my boy, definitely awesome fight man. Peter Yen came in there and show you why he's Peter Yen. You know, what I mean, he 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 um the first round, all he was doing in the first round. Was trying to figure out some, figure out how he moves, figure out the techniques he throws, um, get his timing down. And second and third round, pfft, just he just he pretty much just dismantled him, took him down, do whatever he wanted to do. Cause he read him, he he knew everything that was coming his way in that first, second, third. He just finished the fight. Curtis Blades and Jonathan Almeida, same thing here. Experienced guy in Curtis Blades, man. Jonathan Almeida is pushing too many takedowns, forcing it too much. Because he doesn't want to strike, because it doesn't have the striking like that, you know. But the entire card is good, man. And Jack Della Mena here against Gilbert, Bur Gilbert Burns was close fight, almost. If Burns, if it went to a decision, Burns would have won, and he just got that um, that uh, knockout, you know. So uh, excellent card. Um, Kyla Phillips, excellent performance, man. Kyla Phillips versus Sean O'Malley. Kyla Phillips will beat Sean O'Malley. They're not really trying to promote Kyla Phillips too much. I noticed that. Because they know that he will beat Sean O'Malley. I have Kyler Phillips beating Sean, o Sean, o Sean O'Malley. May not be an easy fight, but technique-wise and striking and ground game, I feel Kyler Phillips is way more well-rounded and his skill set is, is similar to Sean O'Malley, but I feel Kyler Phillips does it better. So, yep. All right, guys. Quick here. Just jump into this. Um, first fight here, guys. We got um, Chad Angler versus... Oh, Charla Poss Garob, man. I'm just gonna say Char, man. Um, <laughs> Chad is a short notice. Um, 
He's pretty well-rounded guy, um, light in the foot, unorthodox kind of strike in there. Uh, we let his hands go heavy-handed, um, but he's been subbed six times though. Um, his opponent here, Char, I'm just going to say Char, guys. Um, come off the contender series here, can get flat-footed. He pack power, will look for takedowns, not much submissions though, he more look to take your head off. Um, kind of a little stutter step in there, kind of telegraph his movements, rushes forward, swing wild, chin is up in the air. Um, kind of remind me of a Diego San Sanchez, um, when Diego Sanchez used to strike, kind of stutter step, kind of wing the punches, face is there to get hit. Um, this is a tough one here because, like I said, Chad is a short notice here, but I don't know how much of a short notice he is, but um, I'm kind of liking Chad here, guys. I'm going to say Chad by KOT in the third round, but I'm not confident in this one. It's a 50-50. And a guy like Char... He could be Chad, because Chad, you know, he can drop the he can drop the ball coming off of two fight losing, you know, against Jose Johnson and Anteleg, which he looked good against and and Anteleg in that fight, you know, he didn't look too bad, you know, um, but like I said, Chad has the skills, man. I feel like he's more he's more the skilled fighter here, you know, um, against Char, you know, so you know we're gonna look, probably look at the age, you know. But as as we say, veteran guys, you know, age is a number. It all depends on your skill set and how you take care of yourself. So I'm going to go with Chad. I'm going to say Chad by Kyoto in the third round, guys. I'm not confident. Next fight, we've got Corey McKenney versus Jacqueline Amorim. Um, uh, Corey here, um, she's pretty well rounded, man. Her ground game is pretty good, actually. Um, her striking is not bad, but she's hitable, though. We'll rush forward, um, but, you know, push the heavy wrestling. Um... Um, can get put in some bad situations though on the ground, you know. Sometimes you can kind of tire up a little bit, but she, you know, she tends to get out. But uh, she's knowledgeable about the ground. But you know, what I mean, <laughs> a girl like um, Jacqueline here is pretty good BJJ black belt. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm gonna have a 10 inch of reach, which doesn't make a difference because her striking to me is is not that great. You know, and no really pat no power. You know, Corey gonna have the way better strike in here, but she's a BJJ black belt, high level grappling, but she doesn't really wrestle like that though. So she likes to pull you down into her guard. You know what I'm saying? And she will put off submissions on you, and she will what she do? She will sweep, you know, and kind of reverse and scramble on you, and then get and then get on top. So this is a a, a tricky fight here in the sense of I feel that Jacqueline is kind of like one dimension, which she is one dimension. Um, she doesn't really shoot, no, not much wrestling, but her BJJ is good on the ground though. And her striking is my in my opinion is not it's it's not really there, man. This is a fight for Corey to win. Only one thing here, if Corey play around in our guard, she could get swept and she could possibly there's a submission chance. There's a submission chance for Jacqueline. So be careful. But I feel that Corey is a more well-rounded fighter here with everything that Jacqueline has, Corey has it, but just you know that arm bar that triangle the sweeps always there man it doesn't, doesn't matter if you you know you're well-rounded but Jacqueline does BJJ real good you know so that's that 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 is her strength so I, I must say Corey by decision was a 50 50 because if she plays around in our guard she doesn't have to be in our guard because Jacqueline doesn't really shoot like that doesn't double leg she likes to tie up and then usually pulls you down so if Corey if I was Corey's corner I tell her to don't go down in our guard Stay, stay away from the BJJ, which she can because Corey has this better striking. She doesn't have to go to the ground, man. So, they're, they're, you know, we see fights, especially a woman, you know, a lot of women fights. Oh, you know, she's winning, winning, and she goes on the ground and gets submitted when she didn't have to beat her. And also the guys, too. But I got Corey by decision, 50-50. Be careful with this one, guys. <laughs> it could be one of those, man. All right, we got Tiago Mas versus Mitch Ramiz. Um... Masir is well-rounded, um, BJJ black belt. His, his striking has gotten better. Pretty heavy-handed guy. Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see what I have here. Uh, just, let me see. Going to take out. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I feel like he's going to take out his frustration. <laughs> He's going to take his frustration out on this guy. I mean, I usually write my notes down here. I feel like in this fight here, he's going to take out his frustration because his loss against. Um, Dennis here, St. Dennis. Um, I just call him St. Dennis, man. I don't know, but um, you know, he's gonna take out his frustration on this and this guy, uh, Mitch. You know, Mitch, 
you know, he's a straightforward kind of dude, very flat-footed or wind up, you know, a lot of overhands. Um, we'll go for the takedowns, kind of slow at the movement, very slow at the movement. I feel like Moise is a quicker guy. He's a better fighter all around. So I feel Moise can take this anywhere he wants. So he can finish it by punches or by submission. So I, that, that, that is why I say I have here he's going to take out his frustration because of his his loss against Dennis, right? So I got Moise here, submission first round, guys. And like I, I gave Moise 16 and I gave Mitch 40. And Mitch is also a short notice, all right? So Morris by submission first round. Next fight here, guys. Flying through these real quick, but accurately. Um, we got um, Josh Kulaboyo. Kuya versus Daniel Silva. Um, Kuya, guys, in um, Philippines means um, big brother. And the uh, reason why I know that because I, I, I hang on with a lot of Filipinos, especially back in the days. And my my ex girlfriend was a uh, you know, she was Filipina, so um, you know. And then I, you know I hang on with a lot of the guys, them you know, friends, and I still have friends. I have um, two guy friends that are um, uh, they're Filipino. So you know, we speak Tagalog is the uh, the native um, native tongue that they speak um in the country of philippines so kuya means big brother yeah so um yeah man so this guy here josh man i, I like um josh is pretty good man he, he's very technical um he has heart the dog in him his, his ground game his boxing his striking is not bad kind of slick with him and he's pretty dur durable um he's gonna have the three inch of reach here against Laron murphy he was doing pretty good but that liver shot kind of took him out there um, kind of got hurt with that, but he never quit though. This is a guy that doesn't really quit. You know, I remember his fight here against, we took on shortness against Jordan Turner, which was massive, man. Weight, he went, I think he was at 155, he usually fights at 145, you know. And Jordan Turner's just reach and height was massive, and he, and he hanged in there as best as he can. Um, his opponent here, Danny Silver. <laughs> Danny Silver um, kind of walks it down, um, heavy handed, uh, mix up his striking well. Um, kicks and legs and everything like that. A lot of leg kicks I notice. Um, can get flat footed, kind of shells up a lot though. Kind of roll with the shots. Um, let me see here. Um, roll with the shots, but um, uh, what did I have here? Um, kind of roll, slip the punches then. Um, I don't know what I have here though, but um, this guy here is not bad coming from the I believe it's coming from actually yeah the contender series here. Silver is not bad, but I feel that like Josh has faced guys like Silver already. You know, he's gonna be a, a guy to come forward and let everything go. I just feel like Josh I feel like he's a little more well rounded, a little more Josh is a little more um, of a season, more tested here. I feel with Silver coming from, a, coming from the Contender Series, like I mentioned, a lot of these guys from the Contender Series usually don't do too well. And some do. You know, it's like a, a coin flip. But I'm going to go with Josh here. I'm, I must say Josh by decision, but it's a 50-50. All right? 50-50 fight here, guys. And I'm not confident in this one. All right? Because like I, like I see, what I see from Silver, he's not bad. He's not bad. He can be hittable. And, you know, he comes forward, kind of pushes a lot. Can get He can get hit coming straight but he likes to slip and roll but the punches still hit him you know and it looks like there are points of the fight where he can get knocked out in you know in, in my opinion from what i see from contender series so i'm gonna go with josh here josh by decision not confident 50 50. next fight we got Odi osborne versus jaffel philo probably mispronounced that um <laughs> Odi osborne here um rangy guy quick athletic you know this guy you know he's quick guy athletic um but he can get sub and he's hittable. Um, he's skill, but I feel with Philo here, Philo is. Uh, I feel Philo is more technical and more experienced, especially with the BJJ. I feel that Odi Osborne, he, he, he can strike and he can, you know, ha ha has the ground game too, but he doesn't do it at any high level in my opinion not disrespecting him i mean his striking is decent and if he catches you he can knock you out but i just feel like it's it's what what philo what philo possesses is um his his ground is very 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 technical very very technical high level and what i did to muhammad man he, he pretty much you know in my book he won the fight you know he, he messed up muhammad leg you know, he actually messed up his knee in that one. And that knee was in was was like a banana. 
He was like bent back like a banana. I mean, the leg was done. He was limping, and um, pretty much I felt he won that fight in the kind of way, even though he got submitted by Rene Kachok. But but then Muhammad never tapped though, you know. And, but what I see from this guy, man, this guy is very skilled, even striking. I feel like he could even beat Odias Bone with the striking too. His tight striking is heavy, he's straight, quick. He mixes up well. I feel with Odias Bone, he's more rangy, more um, more of a technical guy, but. There's openings, man. You can catch him, especially with straight shots up the middle. Catch him, man, and especially takedowns and submission. If this guy gets him taken down the first one, I believe we will submit him, man. In my opinion, there's no disrespect. All over the end of the day, man, I'm just breaking on the fights, how I see it, and, and what I've been studying. I'm going to go with Philo here. Philo by submission in the first round. Um, like I said, Odie could catch this guy here and hurt him. Most definitely. You could catch him and hurt him and, and, and then hurt him. I don't believe Philo has been ever been knocked out though. That's why I'm going for him. This 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 guy here is pretty is pretty good. Philo is pretty good everywhere. I mean for what I see. He's been submitted two times, never been knocked out. The Odi could also submit him too, but I mean <laughs> I just feel like Odi is just he's just is is like his striking is not high, high level on his ground, is not definitely not high level. I feel Fula possesses, you know, the, the ground and the striking is just more of a higher level than um, Odi has been, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Philo here. I'm going to say Philo by submission the first round, guys. I give Philo 60 and I give Odi has been 40. All right. Next fight here, guys. We have Josana Nunes versus Chelsea Chandler. Nunes are... Uh, She's pretty small, short, like 5'2", but her reach is not bad for 5'2", I guess. Um, Pack forward a while, she would brawl, um, try to take your head off. Her opponent here, Chelsea. Chelsea is kind of like a brawler. you got a 6 inch of height, though. But she's she's hateable, man. Her chin is high, doesn't move her head, flat-footed. The only thing about this fight that I look at is that she may get takedowns against Nunes. That's a possibility. And apply more that height, but the reach is pretty even. She can put that height on her, but her face is just there to get hit. She doesn't move her head off center line at all. That's the only thing in this fight. I feel like Chelsea could win the fight if she can if she can get the takedowns and then put the body on her, cause she can have the height advantage. You know, I mean, N N I mean, Nunez is like five two, so so she can have a six inch of height, which can play a factor. You know, um, but her chin is just high up. But Nunes, you know, hit like a truck. Her punches are heavy. You know, she sits down in it, especially when she backs you against the cage. I'm gonna go Nunes, man. But I'm gonna say Nunes by decision because a girl like Chelsea is pretty. She pretty dog and tough. You know, take big hits and keep coming forward, which is not good. You know, again, you know, coming from C's Gracie Jiu Jiu Jitsu, so she she may try to implement more takedowns in this fight. To be honest with you. So this is a fight where I'll be careful with it. Like I said, she could go for takedowns and put up the fight by just taking Nunes to the ground, man. Yep. So it could be one of those, man. So this is a fight where I would I'll probably fade it. I wouldn't mess with this fight too much. So but I'll go Nunes by decision though, but um not confident guys. Alright. Next fight here we have um Mike Davis versus Nathan Levy. Uh, Mike Davis here, uh, this guy can box, man. His boxing is sharp. Decent striking, kickboxing, ground game is not bad. We look for wrestling and takedowns. Um, scrambling, not bad. This guy's pretty legit. Levy, more of a karate stylish. But with Levy here, you know, he doesn't really have any knockouts. He has more submissions. So his ground game is not bad. Um, but the thing about Levy that I noticed is that karate base, but his strikes are not tight. Strikes are kind of loopy, kind of out there, you know, not a quick guy, you know, not fast at the movement, and the shots are just kind of loopy, you know, it's not tight. Like a guy like Mike has his strikes are tight and compact and just sharp. I feel with Levy is not as sharp, man, and uh, sometimes you leave his chin is high up and he's hittable and get caught with punches. This is a fight where Levy could get knocked out in this one, it's a possibility. But I must say, um, I don't think Levy has ever been finished. But it's a, you know, it's, you know, it happens, man. You know, you, you never been finished, but always a first time for everything. Not wishing bad in the body, but 
like I said, with Mike Davis, Mike is sharp. His boxing is sharp, and he has the ground game to defend Levy's takedowns, in my opinion. And a guy like Levy will gas out. After second round, he started to gas. Mike will also gas out too. But I'm gonna go with Mike here. I'm gonna say Mike by decision, and I'm gonna say 50 50. And I'm calling out Levy because Levy is a, is a pretty good fighter. It's just the matchup, the speed advantage by Davis, the techniques are sharp by Davis. You know, uh, boxing is sharp, and he has a wrestling, he has a take on defense. So I'm not sure how Levy is going to win, but it is what it is. But might by decision. Next fighter, we got GM3 versus Brian Barbarano. Man, Gerard Merchant, we know what he wants. He wants the submission, man. If he gets down, most likely he submit you. 20 something by submission, you know. But this is a guy where he's super hittable. You know, his face is there to get hit. Um, you know, it's just, it is it is what it is. It's just, <laughs> you know, when he fights guys who brawl with heavy hand, it doesn't do too well. You know, a guy like Barbarano, I mean, he sees this already. You know, his last fight against, um, against Murdoff. You know, Murdoff was taking him down, but Murdoff couldn't finish him. I don't expect GM, GM3 to be taking him down like that. GM3 is slow at the movement. GM3 is hateable. You know, what I see from Barbarana in, against Murdoff fight, he actually didn't look too bad. You know, he was stopping takedowns, you know, at, at some time. He didn't get submitted. You know, and he was landing shots against Murdoff. On Murdoff, so he didn't look too bad. You know, if he fights that way against GM3, I, I could see him winning. You know, um, possibly even getting a knockout is possible too. But I'm a, I'm I'm gonna say um, Brian Barbarano by decision though, guys. And it's a 50-50. But this next fight here though, man, is like, you know, you, ne you just never know. I mean, GM3 coming here and get him with a submission in the first round, or or push him into deep water third round and submit him. You know, or Barbarano knocks him out in the first round. You know, it's just it's a toss up. So I say decision by Barbarano. I'm not confident. 50-50. Next fight we got Pina Kanzad versus Macy Chison. Um, part two. Um, Pina does the same thing. Uh, Pane. Pane does his Pina. Pana does the same thing in a fight. He can take her down. And possibly submit her. That's that's how she lost the first fight with Macy. Got submitted in the I believe it was the second round. Yeah. And Macy's a She's big. She's massive for 135. She, she could go up to 145. You know, I mean, if Macy wants her, she's massive, massive, man. So, I mean, six inch of reach, four inch of height. She beat her the first time, you know. Um, but she could drop the ball, though. That's the thing. You know, against Irina Aldano. Winning that fight, she got caught in the liver. You know, it happens, you know. Rickle Panton, pretty similar, you know, back her up. But... You know, she beat Pana already, and Pana is just can't stop takedowns. She could take her down and submit her again if she want to, which I feel that's going to happen. Um, I had this fight by decision, but I must say, I, I had it by decision, but I'm going to change that. I, I must say, Macy submit her by um, in the first round. Um, even though Macy hasn't have a her last submission was against her last submission was against her. <laughs> was against hold on. Her last submission was against Penne, right? What am I looking at here? Yeah. No, her last yeah. And then this was yeah. This was like two eighteen was her last finish. That is that is why I have decision. And Penne has a uh, Pane has, in, has improved a little bit, but she can still get taken down, and that's the thing. You know? Um, uh, just that when Macy take her down, just the ground and pounding. You know, the um, she's pretty brutal when she, you know, when she gets into the guard. And when she gets down and she gets you, mount you, she's pretty aggressive. She usually tr she usually will go for the finish once you dominate in that fashion, you know? Um I must say I'm gonna keep decision here. I'm, I must say um, uh, Macy by decision, guys. All right, I'm, and I'm not confident either, because like I said, Pena has improved. So you know, because like I said, with Macy Chison, she hasn't been looking good either. So you know, it is what it is. So I must say decision. Yeah. Um, next fight we have Christian Rodriguez versus Isaac Dolgarin or Dolgarin. 
Um, Chi Rod. Um, this one is a tough one here, guys. I got Chi Rod here going up to back. Well, he fast at 145 before, but he's going back to 145 again. I guess that's I guess the weight that's supposed to be at because he came at the weight at 135. He's missing weight. Decent striking, very well rounded guy, man. Um, but you know, um, one for the five against Jonathan Pierce, you know, dominating with the wrestling, you know what I mean. And uh, he fighting a guy like you know, um, like Isaac, who is pretty good with the wrestling, man, like pretty good wrestling, man. Um, and grown and pounding. The only one thing about Isaac, though, is all first round finishes. What does he look like after first round? <laughs> we don't know. All first round finishes, man. What does he look like when he gets out of when when he can't finish you in the first round? If that does happen, that's the issue right there. Like I said, this guy is high level wrestling in Isaac, but um, you know what I mean. I mean, heavy ground and pound if he gets it there. You know, which he did in all his fights is hundred percent finishing rate. But what does he look like if he can't do that in the first round? Exactly. Showed that against um, Royal Rosa, you know, who was high level wrestling too, and, you know, put Royal Rosa into deep water and drown him. A guy like Cameron, who is. Cameron is a very good fighter, man. He took his. He took his O. Oh, this guy, Cameron, is a very good fighter, man. I actually had Cameron winning that fight. You know what I mean? I mean, can, can Isaac come in here and out wrestle him? Strong possibility. But he would have to finish, finish. He would have to finish Rodriguez, though, possibly in the first round, or he could get a decision. Just, it just, but it's just hard to tell. It's difficult to tell because I we haven't seen him, you know, out of um, out of the first round against Francis Marshall, who's a very tough fighter too. You know, but Francis Marshall lost against William Gomes by split. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm gonna go see Rod, but. I'm not confident because C Rod struggles against guys who can wrestle high level. And we saw what Jonathan Pierce did at 145. So Isaac could come in here and just grind out a decision. I don't think he can finish Christian Rodriguez though. I don't think he can do that. And if he can't do that, then the fight could go the other way. With Rodriguez drowning him in deep water, put him in deep water. Pull off pull off a decision, maybe a split. Careful for this one. Got Rodriguez C Rod decision 50-50 guys. Next fight here, guys. We have uh, uh, one second. We got um, Kennedy, oh uh, man, Nikachui <laughs> versus Ovin St. Pro. As much as I break these, break these guys down, I will never. I always mispronounce the name, man. Negcheg, Neg, 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 Neg Okay, there you go. Kennedy here, um, pack power. Last fight didn't come out too good for him. He got knocked down, but I feel I feel it was a sh uh, a quick stoppage there. I felt like he wasn't really out in that fight. I think he could have kept on going. Um, he can drop the ball though, but a guy like Saint Pru here, I feel Saint Pru is on his way out, in my opinion. You know, I mean, no disrespect or not like that. You know, if these guys are in there, they deserve to be in there. But you know, eventually after a while, you know, you. You're just not moving as well anymore. Your timing not there. Your speed not there. You know, I mean, you're becoming more hittable, getting knocked out easier. You know, it just doesn't look good. He's still got punches and power, and he's still got the Van Flew choke on you. If he if he gets on top of you and lock it down, but uh, I got Kennedy here. I got Kennedy by a first round KO TKO. But like I said, Kennedy could he, he could drop the ball too. Be careful again. <laughs> you know, what I mean, if if Saint Paul connect or even get him on the ground. Just never know. And the Van Flew is there. Never know, man. Even ground and pound. But I got Kennedy first round KOTQ. Not confident. Next fighter, we got Bram Battle versus Angie Lusa. Bram Battle been looking good, man. Well rounded guy. Improved striking. Ground game looking better. This this guy looks pretty legit, man. Um, some good some good performance and all you know, back to back finishes. He's fighting against Renat. Understandable. Took that fight on short notice. Tough guy in Renat. Um Loza though, um, Loza, uh, Pat Power will mix it up, but he will gas out though, and kind of look like he will break in the fight, but he keeps his composure. I just feel like battle is just more the dog here. It's gonna push the high pace, um, you know, 
take the fight wherever he wants to take it. So I like in battle here. I'm gonna say battle by decision. I give battle 60% and lows of 40. All right. That was a co-main event. Main fight on the card here. We got um, Tai Tessavasa versus Marcin Tuboro. Um, Tai here, man, more of a brawler though, man. Uh, Pack Power. Poor fat IQ though, but he, he closes distance pretty quick, man, for a big dude, right? And Pack Power, he, he gonna have a speed advantage. You know, a guy like um, like Tuboro, Tuboro experience, and but it's just a speed advantage. It's the matchup, the speed advantage. He doesn't doesn't move out the way quick enough he's hittable can get hurt on the foot he's gonna be the slower fighter here he will plot for you though he's a five round fight so be careful with this one because he will plot and take into deep water and drone you which he does a lot but i just feel like ty has fought you know he has beat enough guys like Derek lewis augusta sakai um who has he beat here andre alaski you know um you know like those pretty much those three guys there <laughs> You know, but Marcin Tabora, you know, he he beat guys that are kind of like on the slower end. You know, like uh, Avanov here is pretty slow. Or, um, Romanov, Amanov and Romanov, pretty slow too. Don't really have much striking, you know, more ground. You know, Walt, Walt Tyra was, was a pretty quick guy there. But the Fight IQ and Greg Hardy, these guys, Ben Rockwell, these guys are not really, you know, um, he beat Sergei Splitvak too, you know. But, um you know but guys are quick a little more quicker the movement tends not to do not, not to do too good against them guys that can close distance quick like Derek Lewis here um Augustus Sakai may not be the quicker guy here but they can close distance maybe a little more quicker he tends to struggle against them and I just feel Ty you know coming off his last loss here against um on like um Alexander Volkov he look in a little bit he, in a well in a little rounds here and there a little small parts it did look kind of okay, but Alexander was destroying him in that fight. But Alexander looked sharp in that fight. His speed was there, his timing, his combinations were quick. You know, but you can see that Ty was landing some shots and coming in closing distance quick. I just feel like Marcin is not going to be able to get it away so fast of that. I feel he's going to hurt Marcin in this fight. Again, if Ty is unable to do that, five round fight, and, you know, Marcin takes him into second, third, and fights are going on, and Ty could be in serious problems. Because Marcin gets gets better as a fight going on. Remember this. So this fight here, man, I'll be careful. I'm going to see what the weigh-ins look like, the face-offs. See if Ty is in any better shape. Because <laughs> if he ain't, I probably could change to Marcin, which I have that on my Patreon, guys. So be careful, okay? I'm going to go with Ty here. I'm going to say Ty by QOT in the first one. And that's probably in, uh, not the best pick. <laughs> but with Taboro, he's just slow at the movement, man. He's slow at the movement, man. And... and and Ty could close that distance so quickly and got the power, man. You know, and um, yeah. You know, so that's just, that's just it right there. But we saw that against Alexander too, and Alexander did that. Close the distance real quick. But I feel, um, I feel with Ty, you know, I feel Ty could carry that power a little bit more into the, even the later rounds. I feel with Alexander, he just gasses out completely. Alexander Romanov just totally gasses out after first. I feel like Ty can carry more of a pace, even into, into the third. He just has, his card is a little better. You know what I'm saying? So, and then power is still there. So, still, you know, a guy like, a guy like to Toboro who don't really move out of the way too quick and kind of slow. There's always a bunch of chance by Ty, first, second, or third. Fourth and fifth, I don't know. I'm not too sure. So, that's it right there, guys. Um... Kill TK first one by Ty and quick look at the odds, them crazy odds here. This is what these crazy odds looks look, crazy odds looking like. Crazy odd. Crazy odds. Yeah. Chad underdog. I knew that he would probably be underdog against Char. <laughs> Um, what I think about that, um, I could see why, you know, Char is, uh, you know, he, he, Char packs some power coming forward, but like I said, that chin is high, and I feel like Chad is a more experienced guy, man, but again, I could be wrong in this one, and short notice by Chad, I don't know how much, so be careful with this one, but I like him, Chad, but it is what it is. Corey and Jacqueline, Corey favorites, I don't disagree, but like I said, 
there's always that submission chance by Jacqueline. If Corey wants to play around in our guard, it's up to her. She doesn't have to though. She doesn't have to because Jacqueline don't have the best wrestling. She just has the BJJ on the ground and her striking is not at the level of Corey. Slow punches, no power really. So it's up to Corey if she wanna play around in the guard, but it's risky. But the odds are not too bad on her, you know. She's supposed to come in this fight. Moss at 300 and something. I don't disagree with this one. I feel he should beat Mitch. He's going to take up this frustration on Mitch. Danny Silva and Josh. Josh 192. Um, what I see from Silva, he doesn't look bad. You know, like I said, his chin can be high up, can get caught with punches. I like Josh here, cool here. But I would make it a little more closer. You know, I feel just could be slightly a little bit too higher because, like I said, from like I said, what I said from Silver, he doesn't look bad. So a little more closer, you know, the odds. Yeah, I feel is a little bit higher on Josh here, but I will be careful. But I, I do have Josh winning. Philo on Odi Osborne, Philo one seventy. Yeah, I feel Philo is good everywhere, striking and on the ground. I feel he's a more well-rounded fighter, more the more skilled guy, with with actually high-level skills. No disrespect to Odie. You know, he has the the um the athleticism and the speed and everything like that, but I just feel Philo is just a more technical, more skilled guy. So I don't disagree. Chadler, Chadler and Nunes, 148. I'll make this fight even. And the reasons for that because Chadler could take down Nunes. That's pretty much it. Take her down for three rounds, pull off a win. May not finish her, just get her down. Double leg, single leg, double leg, single leg. That's it. Be careful with this one. I have Nunes, but be careful with it, man. Yeah, be careful with this one. Should be even. Mike Davis and Nathaniel Levy. I disagree with this. I do believe Mike is a more sharper, more cleaner striker. But Levy is not bad. So, he's not a bad fighter. He just that some techniques he's thrown is just kind of loopy and it's kind of open. But I wouldn't make Davis no 400 and something. Both of these guys have been fought since 2022, I believe. So, and Mike Davis is coming off of surgery, knee and shoulder surgery, or something like that. Knee surgeries, so that's like two, <laughs> you know. So, you know, when you're coming off injuries and surgery, you know, you're not, I guess, you're supposed to be 100, percent but it's never really when you have knee surgeries, you're never the same. So, be careful with this one, all right. Barbarina and John Merchant is 200 and wow wow they're high end merchant so they're saying that merchant is definitely gonna win this fight huh <laughs> how would the what the this one is the most craziest odd of the whole card crazy odds here man crazy this one should be straight up even merchant at 230 no way man a guy that <laughs> he's hittable can get knocked down at any time Will once he lock up the submission, most likely he get it. But how Barbarina looked in his last fight, defending those submissions from his last opponent there, didn't look too bad. And if Barbarina connects to Gerald, he could knock him out. It's, you know? And Gerald not really shoot for takedowns like that. He would tie up, but he doesn't really wrestle like that. So I don't know how he's 230. That's this is bananas. Even fight, guys. I got Barbarana. Even fight. Be careful with this one. Chasen and Kenzad. Next fight here, you know, Chasen hasn't been really looking too great, you know, but she beat Penny already, you know what I'm saying, by submission, second round. So, and she's a big 135er, massive. So she should win this fight. But like I said, with the woman fight, man, he sometimes it's just, even the guy fights, but mostly sometimes the woman fights, it's just, you pick one woman to win that you think gonna win. Like I pick, oh, Corey, and then Jacqueline Sumitter. Then you pick Macy. Then Panny knocks her out. You know, it just happens like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. You know, or you pick Nunes and Chan, Chan and Chandler takes her down every single round the bad decision. So, you know, you just have to be careful. But this should be more of a closer. I have Macy winning, but more closer. Just because of her, her last performances. You know. Um I'm missing some missing some fights here. Which ones are missing here? Um Missing a couple of fights here, huh? Oh. Let's refresh this. We're missing a couple of fights. We're missing, which, which fights are we missing? 
Rodriguez, Kennedy, Battle and Ty. Um, I know they probably have the odds up on topology. Oh, here you go. All right, Martin Tuboro and Ty, perfect. This fight is even perfect because Tuboro could just game plan and, like I said, be plots. You know, he would take some hits and like cover up and just like act like he's hurt, which is probably not. But against Ty, Ty pack some power. So Ty, you know, if Ty, if he shows up against Ty, he may get knocked out. So he probably doesn't want to do that. Um, so even fight can go either way. Losa and Battle, Battle 192. I can see Battle winning this fight. I don't know, it's not too bad. Kennedy and St. Prue. See, Kennedy like 700 or something. When you see odds are like this against experienced guys, even though St. Prue is on his way out, careful, man, because Kennedy will drop the ball, especially what he did in his last performance. You got to look at these guys' last performance and what they looked like, too, you know? You know what I mean? It's just... It, 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 and then they're fighting experienced guys. Be careful. I don't, this fight here or the dog or pass. Don't, I wouldn't do Kennedy in any parlay if, if I was doing parlays. You know, you don't want to do that. Because next thing you know, he goes in there and then, you know, always improve Von Fu choke him. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Be careful. Christian Rodriguez and Isaac. Boy, the high on Isaac. I, I had a feeling this would happen. Oh, boy. I had a feeling this would happen. I like C-Rod and this one. Again, a guy like Isaac has a high level wrestling. And we see Christian Rodriguez against Jonathan Pierce. They didn't look too good, you know, at 140, 145. Was that right? Yeah, yeah 145. They, they, they didn't look too good. He looks good at 135, but he can't make weight. guy like Isaac could just grind him out the same way. But we don't see Isaac out of first round, though. What he looked like after first round? If he doesn't finish Christian Rodriguez in the first round, then what is he going to look like? What is he going to look like? We don't know. So he shouldn't be no 198, 200. Doesn't make any sense. Christian Rodriguez here is a more experienced guy, even though Isaac has amazing wrestling. I like C-Rod here. It is, it is what it is. Play at your own risks. Nothing guaranteed here, guys. One love out to everybody here. I uh, appreciate all the love, all the support. On the new subscription I've been getting and the Patreon sign-ups and the donations to PayPal. Keep them coming, guys. One love out to everybody. And okay, also I forgot to mention. Also, if you sign up to the Patreon account, I'm gonna load up the face off right now, so you'll be able to see that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch the face offs now and then up, and then upload that. So that's about it, there, guys. One level to everybody. And oops.